Hey Tubes, yeah it's Saturday morning and we're back on it again. Uh, yesterday we went ahead and we worked on this area down here a little bit and we worked up here a lot and we worked a little bit right down here. So I want to show you the results of some of the reasons I like to use primer uh, after I get done working on area. Not, I mean I use it primarily just to keep the moisture off of it because since we're outside. Uh, but uh, one of the things is in the next the next morning when I go out and I actually work on it um, I get to see the shadow results and you can see I've got a built-up area right here and like a little valley here so I really got to hit this with some 40 grit also this is has a nice transition but right here it gets a little sharp so I'm gonna have to use my uh, round tube here and fix some of that and this is all still rough i mean well not rough rough but i mean it's still rough and that i was roughing it out and trying to uh, let me close this door and trying to get this match the door right over here this scene goes into the door like this and then down and it just kind of fades out like that so uh, i gotta play with that a little bit i'll lift this up so you can see some more right here it looks like uh, right in this area I have a little bit more to do and let's see this is still looking fairly good up in here still have to play with the uh, some of the roughness but when I sand through that it uh, it'll smooth it out uh, the edge right here uh, this is still a little sharp right here but the rest of it seems to be uh, fairly good it's uh, fairly consistent with the rest of the uh, the lines on the vehicle uh, up in here uh, I still have some more work to do down here. This line's still going up and down a little bit. So I'll have to play with that some more. And, uh, kind of watch this transition here. When I run my hand up in here, uh, I can still feel a little bit of a drop off right here. So I'll probably have to address that. I think this was all metal under here, so I can't go down any further. I don't know. I'd have to sand it off again. Uh, the rest of this just was just so smooth. It worked out really good. I worked back in here uh, yesterday and removing some of the scratches and things. It looks like I have a little bit more work to do uh, back up in here. I can't tell if it's even focused. Okay. There you go. I worked back up in here and got some of these scratches out and taken down. So... Uh, that's looking better. I got some of them off of here, which is looking much better. This transition, I just, I've been really happy with the transition on this portion, right, right through here. It turned out really nice. Even all the way up through here, there's, there's still a little small areas and things I have to deal with. Um, but overall, it's, uh, it's starting to shape up pretty good. So that's just the uh, Saturday morning update. And uh, obviously, I still have a little bit of work to do right down in this this little bumpy area right here, bink, right there. So, <clears throat> and my dog's talking to me. Here's me talking, so he wants me to come over and uh, play with him. But we got work to do. So. Okay, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and attack this area right here and try to get it down. Uh, this area right here. Let me see if you can see it right here. It looks like it's actually kind of high right here. Like this is the metal and i think that is metal i'm not 100 percent sure if it is i might have to tap it down a little bit to get this smooth or add some more filler i'm trying to stay away from as much filler as possible but we'll see what happens uh i'm really happy with the way this curve turned out uh but i have to deal with this seam right here and some of this area so what i'm using is my uh my harbor freight uh medium board let's start hitting this this area down here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start going sideways like this on my 45 degree angles and I'm going to concentrate more on this area and you can see where the uh, where the highs are by the by the stripes right here and where the low is there and I need to get down to where this starts to look like that so let me get to that And to take care of some of this area in here, I'm going to let this uh, come all the way down into here a little bit to take some of that out. Right here, like this. Yep, and I was right. This was a, a metal area that's kind of high. So you either have to build this or tap this down. 
and I'm not sure what I'm going to do. It's easier to build the tap, but my issue is this seam right here, this crease. So I don't want to take do too much in here because then I have to blend this some more. So I don't know. Let me just play with it a little bit and see what I come up with. This 80 grit cuts really fast too, which is nice, but it just means that you're going to have to use uh, uh, some 120 or something later, some 220 to uh, finish it off uh, when you go to uh, when you do your primer and stuff, or before you put your primer on. So let me get to it. What I'm doing over here is I'm trying to blend this area in with this little round area down here too. And the way I'm doing that is I'm coming down here and then I'm kicking it out like that. Like this. Like that. And that'll help this transition right through here, help this seam transition, and it'll help this transition for this area here. Let me get a rag and wipe that off for you so you don't have the reflections from the dust. we go so you can see that's looking a little better uh, let me see if I can't move this over here a little bit to give you a little bit better shot got dust all over the camera <laughs> there you go let me get you back in the shade here so you can see I hit this a little bit but I still need to hit it some more so let me hit that with my uh with my little tube here right here like that what i'm doing is i'm coming out here on different angles and then i when i get to where i like it a little bit more then i start to roll it to kind of transition it better you can go up and you can go down probably come in here later with a little bit of 220 and see what that looks like so let me get a little further along here I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull some of the uh, primer off of here let me move it over here a little bit I'm going to pull some of this primer off here and then I'm going to go ahead and sand this area by hand right here and then I'm going to reflow this I think I'd rather build than try to tap that down so and then transition this into here you can see like some little pock marks right up through here. So let me sand that a little bit. Let me get some uh, 220 on here. And then we'll go ahead and hit some primer in that. There we go. Let me get out of your way here. I don't know if you can even see that. Let me go up here. There we go. Let's try that. So you can really start to see the highs and the lows through here where the primer is dark and the filler is starting to come through. So it lets you know it wasn't 100% smooth all the way. And that's one thing that's nice about the primers, it'll, it'll show that. The other thing is this primer is so thin and because it's so close you can just keep building primer on it and then sand that out. And uh, you'd never even know it was there. So let me get back to it a little bit and get a little bit further and then I'll show it to you. Now one of the other things I like to do is, in order to make my paper last a little longer, I just use a little uh, wire brush and I do that. Alright, the other thing I would like to do is, I like to use a little screwdriver here. And I knock off some of the places where the sandpaper gets loaded or galled up or whatever you want to call it. I would choose a screwdriver you don't care much about, just a cheap screwdriver. And you can use the corners, you can come this way, whatever, and it knocks it off. And then you can use your uh, wire brush. I've already done it, so some of them it, you just can't get off, you know, just, just the way it is. So anyways, uh, let me get back on it again. Alright, I've got it sanded down pretty good and blended. And, uh, 
Now I'm going to just shoot some uh, primer on it and uh, sand it off later and see how it looks. Make sure you get a good 50% overlap. I'm not really caring too much about the dry time here. That's why I'm putting two coats instead of one and waiting 10 minutes. So we'll see what happens here. Oh, let me get this down here a little bit better. Alright, we'll wait a little while and put another coat on and call that good before sanding. There's a little spot right there. I'm probably have to use some glazing putty on it. I've just been spraying primer on it, kind of build it up a little bit. All right, the uh, primer is pretty much dried, so now I'm gonna use my uh, 220. Oops, I grabbed the wrong one, so let me grab the correct one here. There we go. Grab my 120 and send it down and see what it looks like. Still have that high spot here and a, that high spot here. See it's uh, coming through a little bit right there. Now one thing is if the uh, if the filler comes through and it's got sand marks on it, and the primer comes through and it's got sand marks on it, then they're the same height. But if the filler comes through and the prime and it has sand marks on it, the filler doesn't have sand marks on it, then you know they're not at the same level. And then you have something to really think about what you want to do there. So I need to go ahead and uh, keep working on this. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about this. I, I just may end up tapping it back down a little bit. Uh, I could grab my ruler here. And actually check and see how high it really is and looking at it right here I can see that this high spot is actually causing a little bit of an air gap under the ruler here where it's not forming quite right now when I go here it's right there's no air gap it's flat all the way from the top all the way down to the bottom and all the way over here and when I come up here oh, it's flat enough it's there's a little bit of a gap in there. So I think I may actually end up tapping this down and this down and then reflowing it and starting this process over again. But hopefully it won't be too much of an issue. I may just be able to just barely tap it and hopefully it won't cause too many problems. Uh, before I do that though, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna uh, re-sand this down here. So let me get to that and we'll see what it looks like. Oh, by the way, the uh, the transition here looks much better uh, now that I've used uh, this little round thing, the round sanding tube. I could probably use a little bit more right in here though, but it's looking pretty good. Let me take you off the tripod and show that to you. All right, here we go. I don't know if you can see it or if it'll even focus let me try to focus on my fingers all right see there's a little bit of some sanding marks in here which is fine and there's some raised uh 
uh, primer there where it broke through the metal before so I just I'll have to probably use 220 grit instead of 120 grit uh, to get rid of some of these sanding marks and uh, so all right and that's 120 over that so it's gonna it's gonna tear up it's looking pretty good just here's some sandy marks up in here all these have sandy marks and everything they all have to be gone uh, before you actually paint you can't leave those in there otherwise it'll show through the paint so but this is just uh it's more than roughing right now it's more of getting the level straight and then we'll go ahead and we'll we'll do the finish sanding on it and get all the marks and everything out of it so that it looks really nice kind of like this up in here where there's no sanding marks or anything there's just uh, some bumps from the primer spray it's got to be smooth so let me uh, get back to it I, I didn't touch this up here at all today so let me get back down to this I really want to get this finished right in here so that uh, I can do all the finished sanding and then get on that and get that done and then hopefully uh, we can paint uh, in a week or two we'll see it really depends on what's going on oh the other thing we did is uh, we actually took a twin fitted sheet one with the elastic on it we draped it over the door and that worked out really good this when I was closing the door we had the tape too tight so when the door would close it would literally pull the pull it apart so we pulled the uh, door insulation down or door seal down and tucked it in and then left more slack in here also we used duct tape this time and hopefully it'll last longer than last time so anyways let me get back to it and uh, I'll show you what's going on later <laughs> 